Sports Night Amplified with Andile on Metro FM. Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. Game over. I'm out in, uh, you know, you don't feel when you live in the city as African as you do when you come out here. I'm at the cradle of humankind. It's a beautiful evening outdoors celebrating with Sascock. They launched their new kit, the kit that we will be represented in, the kit that South Africans will be wearing with pride as they go to the Paris Olympics. We're going to have the CEO of Sascock come speak to us in just a bit. It looks beautiful out here. Maruping, the cradle of humankind is where we are. It feels like I was saying to touch and loot earlier. Got at any moment, you know, like a little uh, lion is going to appear here. You know, um, uh, I'm a little bit nervous, I must be said, but it's beautiful out here, just underneath the stars. It is uh, truly an African uh, celebration with Seth Cock and the athletes going to Paris a little bit all later this year. Speaking of which, one such artist is one that uh, has been trending in South Africa over the past couple of days because on Sunday, Prudence Sechodiso, very few knew about her. Very few knew about the lady from uh, Kwabulubedu. And look at her. She's gone and done wonders. She's run the fastest time in the 800 meters. She did it all the way in Morocco and Marrakesh. 1 minute 57.26. So we'll be speaking to her and we'll speak to the Saskok CEO. But also, we'll be speaking to Mazola Mulefa because it seems we're celebrating with the two coaches who made it to the playoffs. It seems it might change because there's drama in the playoffs as far as the PSL is concerned. So we'll speak to Mazola about that and uh, Mazola will probably give us a heads up as to what's happening with the playoffs, what's the drama and what's it got to do with Morocco Swallows? Because I hear there's a Morocco Swallows link in there. You would have thought that Morocco Swallows safe in the PSL. What do they have to do with the drama that's ongoing in the Mutsipe Foundation Championship and the playoffs? Sports Night Amplified with Andile on Metro FM. Proudly brought to you by SABC Sports. It's Sports Night Amplified with Andile on the Mighty Metro FM. Welcome to it. If you just joined us, we're out at the cradle of humankind. Uh, and uh, it's a beautiful place out at uh, Maruping is where we are. Underneath the stars, it's, you know, I could romanticize it all I want, but it truly is um, a, a beautiful setting. For what we've seen today which was the unveiling of the kit that uh, team south africa will be wearing in paris for the olympics mazalam lefa joins me now on the line he's a regular here on sports that amplified with andy Le, a friend of the room and of course uh, one of the co-hosts on monday with the three wise men mazala do you remember the last kit we wore to the olympics uh, uh vaguely vaguely ma. Uh, there was some criticism about that kit was it not oversized like the athletes looked like they didn't <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, but I've seen I the new that. one. I've seen the new one. It looks great. Exactly. Even you're going to want to have one to go to gym. It, it looks really nice. Okay, nice. I look forward to it. But listen, that's not why I'm talking to you. You've got nothing to do with the Olympics. No football teams going in this country. Uh, but <laughs> there's a little bit of drama. I thought to yeah. myself, you know, um, you were with me in studio on Monday. We spoke to the coach out at Tux. We spoke to the coach out um, at, 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 at um, Dan Dance at Barocca as well. And uh, they were waiting to see who they're going to play in the DCB Premiership. But seemingly, there's been a spanner thrown in the works. Yeah, there's a spanner thrown into the works at this late stage of obviously the playoffs being confirmed after the, the teams in the Mutipe Foundation played 30 games. But the story here, Andy Lane, will we'll develop it further on SABCSport.com in the coming days, that uh, Uppington City, who officially or, or unofficially, mm-hmm. it depends how you look at it, finished in sixth place uh, and missed out on that player's, player's spot, uh, obviously behind uh, Amatak as well as Barocca. But it goes back to their game earlier in the season between them and Milford FC, a club based out in KZN, where... As we know, the lower division, especially the second tier, the rules are that a minimum of five under-23 players must be in the team sheet and uh, three of them must be on the pitch at all times. Uh, now, you know, I've seen a, um, a, a, a report from the match commissioner on the day, you know, uh, updating, actually stating the fact that there were substitutions made by Melford FC and at some point during the match, they only had one player uh, under 23 on the pitch, and that's against the NSL rules. Uh, but you know, it, it, it sounds to me because obviously this game was not on TV, so we are relying on the match commissioner's report and possibly footage thereof. It, 
seems to me that they tried to rectify their mistake at some point in the time, but Uppington City had already spotted it and lodged a complaint, which went to the PSL DC, but it was dismissed uh, by uh, Raymond Heck, the, the chairman of, of the DC. There. But it's now gone to the SAFA Appeals Committee, and now it's out of the PSL's hands, it's in SAFA's hands now. And should uh, Uppington City win that appeal, they will now go... Uh, the level on point with Barocca for the seven for forty seven points and then because of you know, when you win an appeal and you get given three points, my understanding is the NFL rules if I remember correctly, you then get a three nil score line and then it would push their goal difference up, meaning that they would then be ahead of Barocca if it's Uppington City who then go into into the playoffs. But that all depends on what the SAFA appeals committee uh, uh come up with in terms of their resolution. I'm assuming this is all rash now because obviously the dates had already been set uh, as far as the playoffs is concerned, just awaiting who's going to be the person that they're going to be playing or the team they're going to be playing in the PSL. I mean, I'm saddened that once again at the end of a PSL season, at the end of a uh, Mutsubia Foundation Championship season, we're finding ourselves here. Absolutely. This, uh, My understanding is that the, the you know Uppington City lodged the, the case and tried to follow it up with the PSL DC uh, long before uh, the decisive games uh, that decide which teams obviously get promoted, which is now Magesi, who got automatic, automatic promotion, as well as uh, mm. Baroka and Amatax, who are now in the playoffs with possibly Richard Bay or, or Royal AM. But it, it appears that case dragged a little bit, uh, but obviously now there's urgency because the first game of the playoffs kicks off um, uh, on the 2nd of June, immediately a day after the NetBank Cup final between Mamelodi Sundowns and Orlando Pirates. So there's Which is nearly, what, a week and a half from now. Exactly. And remember that these playoffs have to be concluded before the end of June because players' contracts expire at the end of the June. June. So if you've got players whose contracts are ending, uh, they cannot just be given a few weeks' uh, uh, contracts or players to play uh, beyond the 30th of June. So the playoffs must be done. Uh, before the 30th of June, which there's a small window in which uh, you know every party that concerned has to has to play around with, which is why this matter has to sit urgently. That's why I'm saying we'll have further development on our SABC Sports uh, platforms in the coming days. Very quickly, who um, Uppington? It's uh, uh, I think her name is Karabo Mukhashwa. Kar- Karabo Mukhashwa. That sounds familiar. Yes, that is the daughter of the Swallows uh, chairman, uh, David Mukhashwa. She is the twenty-something-year-old daughter. She is the owner of uh, of uh, of uh, Uppington City. You're saying to me that a twenty-something-year-old daughter of the owner of Morocco Swallows is the owner of Uppington, right? Is that is that her age? I don't know her age. She, I, I mean, I've, 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 I've met. Her. I think I've seen her. She, she seems to be in her twenties, but nonetheless, so she owns the team. Um, yes. uh, she's the daughter of uh, Swallow's owner and she is with this team now trying to get into the DSCB Premiership and that is the fight that they are fighting. Absolutely. And remember, they also hired uh, uh, coach uh, Brendan Kruter, uh hopefully in a capacity that he can take over as the head coach. But the position, the title they've given him so far is that of technical advisor. Uh, but, you know, my understanding is that, you know, uh, next season potentially whether they're in the DSCB Premiership if they go all the way in this case or they continue their campaign in the second tier uh, Brendan Tutor will be the coach and to try and steer them forward and the reason I was asking is um, I mean we could have I mean we already got a mother and uh, and son who own a team together in their DSCB Premiership we could for the first time see uh, a family that owns two teams in the DSCB Premiership wouldn't that be interesting yeah, it would be interesting. I think we, we, we possibly could have had it had Chipam Tingesi's son also in the lower division uh, gone all the way in terms of uh, uh, getting promoted because they were in some at some stage through Lisho Nolo Suyema in the playoffs, but they didn't of the lower division as well, trying to get to the uh, uh, professional ranks and ultimately aiming for the DSTV Premiership. So it's it, you know it's been in the pipelines in the past, but it, I don't think it's ever gotten this close if, if memory serves. So if uh, if if if, if Lady Tarabo uh, goes all the way, you could have uh, father and daughter uh, on opposing sides. I mean, hopefully she's not uh, as media shy as to stay away from us here on Metro FM. Uh, that's Mazola. They're gone. I think uh, the line cut there. But thank you so much. I think we get the brisk for that. It's sad 
that we have to be here so many times at the end of every season. I wish that these things were dealt with um, a lot quicker when they do happen. I wish that uh, as soon as these matters arise, they're dealt with so that by the time the season ends, my guess they did themselves a favor by doing it early and doing it uh, quick. They've now qualified, but I wish that everything come the end of the season didn't have to resort to boardroom matters again. Because once again, here we go into the boardroom. You remember what happened before with Mamkiza. You remember what happened with uh, Skukune. We don't want a matter like that again in the DSTV Premiership. Tomorrow we'll get into a lot more detail with what's happening there. Still coming up, I said it to you. She is the new shining light and hope for South Africa to get gold when it comes to Paris. Prudent Sukhuriso, South African 800-meter athlete who ran 1 minute 57, 26 seconds out in Makarish, will be joining us. Sports Night Amplified with Andile on Metro FM. Proudly brought to you by SABC Sports. There's a lot of great hopes when it comes to the Olympics this year. Normally, South Africans' hopes are all pinned in the swimming pool. You know, and uh, there we know it. Especially as well when it comes to, um, uh, uh, you know, post-athletics as well. We know uh, that uh, uh, the Paralympics then come on and we, we, you know, we've got a couple of medals there. But this year, there's a different thing. We spoke to uh, Sean Maswangani the other day. He's a great hope, particularly when it comes to the relay team where Akani Simbini is as well. Akani this year, another one who ran uh, sub-10. He is a hopeful as well. And uh, as of Sunday, we have someone else, Prudent Sekhodiso, South Africa's 800-meter athlete. Timmy says it properly. Timmy, what's that guy? Say it again. Mujajis Klof. Mujajis Klof. Mujajis Klof. There you go. From Mujajis Klof. Mujajis Klof was finest. Prudent Sekhodiso. She's out in uh, Marrakesh, uh, Marrakesh rather, in uh, Morocco. Let's see if we can get her on the line and speak to her about uh, the amazing feat she ran on Sunday in the 800 meters, running the fastest time in the world. One minute. 57.26 uh, seconds. Prudence. <laughs> Prudence. Hello. How are you? I can look with sharp, man. Prudence. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, man. One minute 57.26. Prudence. Where are you going? Well, come on, from Samosipeng, of course. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> where else, where else I get it? I didn't believe. I must be very honest. I said, no, man, something's wrong with my TV. It's writing odd numbers here. Oh, well, also, I was so shocked. When I was crossing that line, I was like, oh, my word, what's going on? <laughs> I thought it was wrong at some point, you know? But when you were running that time, because I mean, you guys can normally feel it when you're running a quick time. As you were running, did you feel like you were running a quick time? Not really, because also the weather was really bad. There was too much wind at the stadium. And yeah, as I said, when I finished that cross line, that finish line, I mean, oh my word, like I couldn't believe it, to be honest. Well, the pressure's on you now, because now all of a sudden you've run the faster <laughs> time in the world this year. Now everybody knows who you are. Now everybody's looking at you. Now everybody's saying, hey, there's the person to watch come Paris. Um, well, really, I don't want to like, put pressure on myself, you know, at some point. But I'm just going to keep um, the energy going forward, you know, going forward, going to the Olympics as well. I'm just going to keep the same energy and know what I want and just focus. Just focus on what you're doing. You know, I'm not alone here. Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting, Prudence, uh, um, with the big boss. Uh, yeah. She's just joined me, in fact, and uh, we're busy having a conversation, you and I, but uh, uh, Mom knows if what you have to Saskok CEO is also sitting here with me. I'm speaking to Prudence. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. all the way in Marrakesh. That's amazing. Prudence, uh, That's just my girl. She, she's telling me about her time that she's just run. We're celebrating. Uh, she's telling me about how bad the wind is and she didn't believe she was running it. Oh, that's amazing. I, I love her to beat. She's doing well. I, I mean, the pressure must be on her now come the Olympics because we're, we're all now looking at her. Yeah, quietly. We're like, this one is going to bring us a gold. But <laughs> saying it very quickly. Come on. Don't I don't want pressure we don't to be pressure honest, on her. Please. Are, we, are we giving you pressure? <laughs> no pressure, Prudence. <laughs> Yeah, at does, some does, does point, but ugh, there's no, nothing I can worry. do right now because already I'm on top of the world. <laughs> <laughs> and you should be. Listen, yeah. this call was just to let you know because you're all the way in Marrakesh. You know, you don't know how no, we I'm feel in South Africa. The, you're not seeing I'm the going celebration. To Belgium yeah. at the moment. Oh, have you moved to Belgium? You flew to Belgium? Yes. 
But listen, all this call was to say is to say, listen, South Africans are so proud of you. Yeah. South Africans that had no idea who Prudence were mm. before Sunday, all of a sudden you're their favorite person. Mm. They love you so much and they're celebrating you. And uh, it doesn't matter what you go on to do from here. Your year is made and you've yeah. done well, yeah? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also, I must tell you, we're out with Seth Cook celebrating and unveiling the new kit that you guys are going to be wearing. Uh, I thought mm-hmm. I was going to come on the air and give you bad news. I know I've got good news. You're going to be looking good, girl. <laughs> oh, nah. Is it? I cannot wait. Hey, you're going to be looking it. good. No, <laughs> no, no. I'm sending yours personally. Honest. You're going to be looking so good. Uh, thank you. I cannot wait. No, we're very excited about the about the kit that we revealed today. So don't worry, don't worry. You're going to look amazing. Remember, um, Paris is the pas- is the fashion um, one of the fashion capitals of the world. Of yeah. world. So we can we can let you guys down. So yeah, 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 yeah. You're gonna look amazing. <laughs> I know, man. Prudence I cannot in- wait. I feel like just pushing the time right now. You know, just in Paris right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Uh, this call, this call was to say, well done, and uh, we're very proud of you. Uh, enjoy Belgium. When you come back, I want you in studio. We must talk about uh, the amazing year that you're having. Thank you so much for taking our call. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Take all of it in. It passes by so quickly. Does this life and this instance thing? So enjoy every minute of it. And South Africa is proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate. Oh, her line is not so great, but she's mm. all the way out uh, in Belgium.